Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be quite a quick one, but it's going to want to oh, try and answer a question that comes up quite often. You'll have seen me do comparisons between, say, 4x12s, 212s, 112s, and the 2x12 Zilla Fat Boy and Fat Baby that I use don't have a grill cloth cover. Now, the question is, why is that? Does it change the tone? Now, I, to all intents and purposes, don't think it does, at least not enough to make any sonic difference. So today, we're going to do a comparison. We're using that Zilla Fat Baby 1x12 that I have with a Celestian Creamback Neo. Although, to be fair, it doesn't really matter what speaker's in it or even what amp I'm using because nothing is going to change in this setup apart from having a grill cloth and not having it. So I'm reamping a quite distorted rhythm and lead tone because the idea there is that distorted tones generally have a lot more high frequencies in them. So if anything's going to come up, there's a much broader spectrum of sound to be affected. So without further ado, we're going to use no grill cloth at all. Then we're going to use this grill cloth, which I've pulled off one of my base cabs. I mean, yes, it's a base cab, but uh, grill cloth is grill cloth. And this one, as you can see, I can you can see through it. It's one. It's your typical bra black. Bra bra bra. It's your typical black grill cloth. It's very acoustically transparent. It's also visually transparent. It's it's very thin. I think it's nylon wire that doesn't do a great deal. I think it's there for cosmetic um, purposes more than anything else. So we've got that one and I've pulled this off a Zilla base cab that I have right now. This is more of the traditional basket weave cloth. This is quite heavy. Some of it's quite thick. As you can see, it's got a lot more to it. You can't really see me through it, which means that in theory, at least, if anything's going to make a sonic difference, it's going to be this one. So. First things first, let's play back the rhythm and lead uh, from each one of these three, back to back, so you can hear if there is any difference. Now, it turns out, much to my surprise, that there is some subtle difference. I mean, it's very, very subtle, but okay, there's a difference. Fine, I'll have it. So what I've done is using uh, Isotope's Ozone 7, which is something that I use for mastering quite a lot. It's got a tool where you can capture a an FFT, a fast Fourier transform, that kind of squiggle that you quite often see you can capture that for the period of an entire piece. So what I've done, I'm gonna put on the screen the one for no cloth, the one for the black cloth, and the one for the basket weave cloth. Now, on their own, to me at least, I don't know about you guys, but they look very, very similar. And they are very, very similar. Now, uh, when we start overlaying them, what you can do with the uh, Ozone software is you, so you're supposed to use this by using like a mastering reference and your track to get kind of an EQ difference, but I'm using it here to give me uh, Ozone's interpretation of if you were going to make one sound like the other, how much would you do? And you can see from this overlay, there's very little that's being changed apart from in the very high end. Now the interesting thing there is, I don't know about how you guys would EQ clean guitars, but for distorted guitars, for me, a lot of the time we roll off everything above about 10 kilohertz because it's just extra noise that's not only not needed, but can actively damage uh, the rest of the mix because it can occupy the same space as something like the clarity in a vocal or hi-hats or overheads or whatever that may be, but might not necessarily be benefiting the rest of the track. So if there are differences up there, to me that means that 
as far as my mix is concerned, there is almost no difference. And the benefit to me of not having the grill cloth, which means I can put microphones in place very quickly without a torch, with repetition, and, and I can just see where they're supposed to go in the studio is a big plus. And to my ears, at least, the difference is so negligible, I'm quite happy doing that. If anything, there should be more high end in the one with no grill cloth because that's not being obstructed in any way. And that's fine by me because that, like I say, gets shelved off or contributes to the sound in a very, very small way. I mean, we're talking half a decibel, maybe a dB at most anywhere in this particular line, which is the difference between a millimeter of moving the microphone left and right. So for me, this is what it is. Of course, on bass, the principle will be exactly the same because this is just measuring the cloth, not the speaker, really. And I did want to use a metal grill to try this as well because I do have a metal grill on an 8x10 bass cab, but unfortunately the damn thing would not come off. It was on so tight I literally couldn't unscrew it. So if that's something you guys really, really want to see, I'll do that in a future video. So there you have it. Something to show you how much or how little grill cloth can make a difference. So when anyone's been you know, moaning on some of the other videos I've done about, oh, the grill cloth makes such a big difference. This is how much difference it makes. And you can hear the difference in speakers, the difference in microphone positions and choices much, much more in my, not only in my opinion, but in the results I have that I've shown you. So if you have uh, a response that is something different, make a video and show us and um, contribute to um, the audio tech world. I mean, hey, that's what I'm trying to do here is show people rather than just talk about it. So we'll be making more videos like this. We've got more interviews with big companies. We've got gear reviews, tutorials. Stick around. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.